Skadoosh! Welcome back to the channel, my ninjas. We are gonna just jump right into it. Guilds of Ravnica, we got a whole bunch of spoilers for you today. I think this first one right here, Healer's Hawk, this one drop planes, good old bird here, might be my favorite spoiler so far. Uh, it's a 1 1 flyer with lifelink. I. We don't see that too often, so it's really cool. You can give this sucker a bunch of auras and whatnot and uh, pump him to all hell and then uh, fire away at your opponent, maybe give him some uh, hexproof ability, and uh, this thing could be nasty. So uh, this is probably my... I'm going to make a deck probably based around this card or just really small cards that I can just pump up, protect, and then swing away. And I mean, with the lifelink ability, I mean, you can stay in the game uh, until you can get around to some larger creatures, especially if you can make this thing unblockable, which there are many cards that do that. So, pretty cool card. This is probably, again, my favorite spoiler from today. Uh, let's see what's next. Murmuring Mystic. I do apologize about some of the quality, but blowing these cards up can be a little tricky at games. Murmuring Mystic. Human Wizard. More Wizards. Four drop. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, create a 1-1 one, one blue bird illusion creature token with flying. Not bad at all, but the four drop going to be a little tough to get that all going. But why is it a 1-5? What makes this wizard so, like, badass that he's got five defense? I mean, there's dinosaurs at five defense. I mean, they're, they're, what? Very interesting. Uh, usually cards, like, fit uh, how they, they, they fit the flavor, you know, I, I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm missing this. I'm missing this one. If someone wants to explain it by all means, how's that five defense? I'm just curious about that. Now this one was already spoiled not long ago. Um, this is the only card that I'm going to go back to, but I did not spoil it yet on my channel at least. So we got Macabre Hatchery. It's a five drop sorcery. Now this is the promo version. Choose a creature. This is a really cool card. Choose a creature card. With converted mana cost, one in your graveyard. Then do the same for a creature card with converted mana cost, two and three. Return those cards to the battlefield. That's sweet, especially with zombies. Um, this is going to be sweet. Um, I, I, can, I can think of many uses for this card, even in modern, uh, with some of the undying effects and whatnot. This thing is going to be, like, once it eventually dies off, you can bring that sucker back again, and you got two more rounds with that thing if it's got undying. I mean, this is a really neat card. Uh, probably, again, one of my top so far. Uh, we have a lot more cards that are going to be spoiled on the, uh, in, in the coming weeks, so I don't know. Uh, here's a rare, though. we got a Fire's Minds Research 2-drop. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, put a charge counter on Fire Minds Research. Produce, remove two charge counters from Firemind's Research, draw a card. Produce, remove five charge counters from Firemind's Research. It deals five damage to any target. I think it's... It's okay. It's definitely going to help with the draw ability for these two colors. Um, I, it's, I don't know if it's in a must-include for these Is It builds, but... It'll be a good addition. How about that? It's definitely going to be a good addition. Direct cringe. Good old Tesla Towers, man. Tesla. That man, utter brilliant genius. Uh, probably one of the most uh, influential people, I think, in the last like 200 years. Uh, good old Tesla. Anyway, moving forward. Uh, direct current three drop. Sorcery. Direct current deals two damage to any target. That's weak. But it's Jumpstart. You may cast this card from your graveyard by discarding a card in addition to paying its other costs and exile this card. So I can see this work. Um, the whole Jumpstart ability, especially with things where you can uh, cast from your graveyard and whatnot. So you can discard a card. Maybe you can cast that card afterwards. You can cast from your graveyard. There are, car there are cards out there that allow you to cast from your graveyard once that thing comes into play, which is ridiculous. So this Direct Current, mm, I don't know how much play it's going to see. Probably not a whole lot, considering Direct Current does have two mountains in its casting cost. Could be a bit rough. Hammer Dropper. Fun name. Maybe just swinging that on top of someone's head. Oosh, don't do that. Bad. It's a four drop with Mentor. Whenever this creature attacks, put a plus one, plus one counter on target attacking creature with lesser power. Five deuce. So, mm, you know, fun, limited play kind of stuff. Uh, being that it's five attack, that's sweet, but the two defense makes this thing vulnerable to just about 
any kind of removal that's out there in the entire game. So this thing's probably not going to see much play. Arbortum Elemental. Cool artwork. Seven drop. Convoke with Hexproof, though. Uh, again, what Convoke does, you can tap any a number of creatures, and it'll pay for a colorless or one mana of that creature's color for each creature you tapped. So you tap down even three of your tokens, tap down four of your zombies. I mean, whatever the case may be, it's going to reduce the casting cost by that many. Hexproof, this creature can't be the target of spells or abilities your opponents control. Again, given <laughs> this coming out with Hexproof is pretty cool. This card with the Convoke 7-5 and Hexproof, I think this will see a bit more play than expected. But again, not a whole lot. But anything that has a Hexproof, um, it, it can be a gem. It can be a real gem in a game, and it can make all the difference between winning and losing a match if that thing cannot be removed. Unexplained Disappearance. Return target creature to its owner's hand. It's two drop. Instant. Surveil one. Look at the top card of your library. You may put that card into your graveyard. Good old reverse scry, or graveyard scry, you could say. So return target creature to its owner's hand. That, could always, that always comes in handy anytime you can do that. And plus with that surveil. I think surveil, this whole graveyard uh, stuff up in this new Guilds of Ravnica, is really going to take flight. Uh, and I think a lot of these cards, I'm not saying this one in particular, but a lot of these cards are going to see play in some modern builds. I do expect to see that. Here's a fun one. Status and Statue. Now you can pay either your uh, forest or your swamp to cast a status. Target creature gets plus one, plus one, and gains death touch until end of turn. I'm glad it's an instant, because if it was a sorcery, that would really suck. To this right of it, we have statue uh, for four. Destroy target artifact, creature, or enchantment. I do believe this card is going to see a decent amount of play. Only because, one, it's basically acting as almost two removal spells in one. Uh, you could ba essentially take out two targets... One, if you, of course, after, you know, you declare, well, once you, before you, right before you declare blockers, you go ahead and throw this sucker up on one of your creatures and block. Doesn't matter if it's a 1-1 token. You're going to kill whatever creature you're blocking. It's got death touch. And then your statue over here could be a, the three different targets to choose from, an artifact creature or enchantment. That's amazing. I think, I, honestly, this is a really cool card. The casting cost might be a bit steep, but getting to knock out two things for the price of one, not too bad, honestly. And those choices, man. You can get that enchantment, artifact, or creature. That's good. I think that's really good. If it had land in its text, that'd be nuts. Really neat card. Uh, Moon Mood Mark Painter. It's a four drop with undergrowth. What is undergrowth, you ask? Well, this human shaman. Enters the battlefield. Uh, target creature gains menace and gets plus X, plus zero until end of turn, where X is the number of creature cards in your graveyard. Now remember, that whole surveil thing, um, that's definitely going to help um, build up creature cards in your graveyard. And then with stuff like this, uh, th it's going to be it's gonna be fun. There's going to be a whole lot of stuff. Like interactions with Delve decks and just all types of things are going to really... Uh, make this be nasty. Delve? What's the other one? Moving forward. Uh, anything graveyard related, basically. I can't wait to see how many cards actually make their way into some modern builds. Now, this card obviously probably won't uh, make its way into a modern build, but it is a 2-3. Pretty neat. And, uh, yeah, there you go. Good old painter. Rosemane Centaur. It's a 5-drop. Good old common. Convoke. Your creatures can help cast a spell. We already know what Convoke does. It's got Vigilance 4-4. Four, four. So, basically, uh, it's a card that's not going to see any play. Unless you're building a deck in a little one of your uh, FNM uh, constructed builds. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, and then you go ahead and just play with your pre-release kit. Uh, that's probably the only time it's going to see much play, I must say. But anyway, good card, good card. Not really. Uh, Radical Idea. Two drop. Draw card. It's got Jump Start. Again, Jump starts new, so I'll repeat this one. You may cast this card from your graveyard by discarding a card in addition uh, to paying its other costs. Then exile this card. So you're going to draw a card and discard a card base. Essentially is what this is doing. They could have made this a one drop, uh, and it would have been sweet. Make it a one drop rare, and uh, I would have bought into it. But being a two drop, uh, I mean, whatever. 
Card advantage is always something. But when you got to discard a card, you're really not having any advantage. Genius is finding the edge of what's possible, then jumping over it. Oh, you little transcender. Barging Sergeant. What is Barging Sergeant? What is this guy about? He's a five drop with haste. Another Minotaur. And a soldier. Hmm. That mentor ability. So, again, whenever this creature attacks, put a plus one, plus one counter on target attacking creature with lesser power. It's a four deuce. Yeah, probably not. Uh, again, going to see any play whatsoever. Except, like, unless you're in your little limited formats and whatnot, or your cubes. That's just about it. The way the cookie's going to crumble on this sucker. Blade Instructor, three drop. Good old human soldier. So humans are going to be uh, a thing. They're going to be pretty crazy. There, I think there's going to be some nasty human builds coming up. I'm not exactly specifying like this card's going to be the one to bring the humans back to life, but uh, this uh, can aid somewhat. Not really. Mentor. Uh, whenever this creature attacks, put a plus one plus one counter on target attacking creature with lesser power. Watch carefully. The gap between death and victory is thinner than your blade. I like that. That is cute. That is cute. Good old SJW for you. All right, moving along, moving along. That's fun. Sonic Assault. Sonic Assault. Here we go. It's a three drop. Instant. Tap target creature. Sonic Assault deals two damage to that creature's controller. <laughs> and it's got jump start, so you can discard this card from your graveyard. Um, I'm sorry, you may cast this card from your graveyard by discarding a card in addition to paying its other costs. Then exile this card. I think I may have confused a jumpstart with a surveil earlier. Do apologize about that. Do apologize about that. Um, I don't know what it is about these kind of cards, but I just like the artwork. I like the red and blues, like all just jammed up into there. Uh, it's it's fun. I, I I do enjoy. All right. Lastly, we got a deadly visit. You're gonna pay five to drop this thing. Destroy target creature. Surveil two. Look at the top two cards of your library. Then put any number of them into your graveyard. And the rest on top of your library in any order. They could have gave this thing surveil four, and it wouldn't have seen much play. Am I right? Uh, thoughts on that one. Uh, so from today, what do you guys think is uh, the best card here um, from the spoilers? Which one do you think is going to see the most play? I guess that's what I want to know. What do you think is going to see the most play? Obviously, some rares are going to probably see the most play, or some uncommons, but... Uh, status and statue, that's, that's a fun card. Nothing crazy. It's really nothing. It's really not that great of a card. It's calm down. It's okay, though. It's fun. Um, unexplained disappearance? Mm, perhaps. Hammer dropper? Mm, no. Direct current? Tesla? I don't know. No. Fire mines research? Probably this one will see the most play out of everything we spoiled today. Or actually, this one's probably going to see a heck of a lot of play as well. I mean, of course, it all depends on what kind of build you're looking to do, but this is. I really like this card. I'm definitely going to make use of this in the zombie deck in modern. I'll probably throw two. Uh, I'll probably probably throw two of these in it. I think two, two copies in my zombies. We'll see. We'll see. Going to see how it all plays out, guys. Not getting too excited here. Healer's Hawk, love it. Can't wait to throw auras and equipment on this thing and just go to Pound Town. All right, guys. I appreciate you tuning in. Make sure you please hit the like button if you're not subscribed already to Bad Boy Gaming. Please subscribe. Uh, your likes how your likes count a lot. They help me. And they help the channel grow, and it shows that you guys give a damn. Thanks for tuning in, and as always, PLA.